How dare you in my own home? What do you hear? What do you say? Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to the studios of the Old Bakery as we get ready to give you another exciting week here at In Your House Weekly. I am your host, Mr. Luke Jennings, hoping the podcast finds you fine and dandy here in the end of July. Hopefully, I don't sound too bad. Got a bit of a cold, bit of a bit of a bung up, but hopefully, I will be coming over loud and clear for you this week. Please do not forget. Don't please do not forget. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button here on our home, the place to be wrestling network. Home of great shows such as Who's Next with This Ring, PTB Weekend Special, PTB Ends, Men of It, Wrestle Tracks, and so many other great shows, including everything coming to you from the old Bakery Productions. You can find the network on Twitter at PTB and Wrestling, and you can find them on all good podcast supplies, as you will do our sister network, the North South Connection. Bringing you such great shows as Row One, Seat One, Wrestling Warzone, The Dunny Position, Alakawa Keithy, Extreme Three Row Dance, Hail to the Keith, Cronoso, and so many other great shows coming to you on a near daily basis, covering a whole plethora of both wrestling and non wrestling topics. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at No So Pod Network. Backbone Wrestling Network is coming to you now. Beautiful coming together of some of the best shows from PTBN and No So, including New Gen on a Mission, Ruthless Aggression, Highway to the Impact Zone, and some new shows such as Cross Up, The Shit Take, and more. For more information, you can find them on Twitter at Backbone24. That is all one word, Backbone, and the number 24. You can find them on all good podcast suppliers, as you will do our little network, the Old Bakery Productions Network. If you so wish to find some of our stuff on there, it is available on all good podcast suppliers. YouTube.com forward slash at MemphisCast if you want to subscribe. ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash MemphisCast if you want to uh, support the pod. <coughs> Please visit com for podcasts, articles and much more on retro pop culture, comics, wrestling, movies, TV, toys, history and more. While you're out and about, please visit the history of WWE.com. Richard and Graham, of course, you covered... For all your historical needs of the WWF, the WWWF, the WWE, ECW, TNA, Ring of Honor, Smoky Mountain, ECW slash, sorry, WCW slash uh, NWA. You can look at arena histories, title histories, TV histories, year histories, you name it. Richard and Graham, of course, you covered this week. We are covering In Your House 12 from December the 15th, 1996. Last week, we covered In Your House 11, where we saw mic problems, dirt, masked men, new contenders, legends meeting, or future legends meeting, as well as all the other awesomeness from the WWF. Before we head down to ringside, let's give you a quick look at what's been happening around this past In Canon month. So the last time we were here was the end of October, uh, so since then, the WWF has had Survivor Series 1996, uh, that came to us live from Madison Square Garden. Um, it was mo- it was uh, a mixture of uh, elimination matches and then singles matches, um, so they had the number one contendership between Bret Hart and Steve Austin, Bret Hart's now back in the company, the winner of that match uh, now faces the world champion tonight. Uh, so Steve Austin has been after, excuse me, Steve Austin has been after Bret Hart. Uh, he's been egging him to come back and wanted to face him. And what better stage to face him than at Madison Square Garden? Uh, we've also got the world title match happens here uh, in Survivor Series. We have a brand new champion as Psycho Sid defeats Shawn Michaels. We have a, a legendary return. We have a debut of some chump by the name of Rocky Maivia. He has debuted. So the full uh, results for Survivor Series that just went, there was a free-for-all match. Elder Montoya, Bart Gunn, Bob Holly, and Jesse James defeated Billy Gunn to the end of the smoking guns. We kind of saw that last time. Uh, Justin Bradshaw, Salvatore Sincere, and The Sultan. Uh, the main show was then Doug Furness, Phil LaFon, and the Godwins defeating Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, and the New Rockers. The Undertaker, New Look Undertaker, defeating Mankind. Uh, we then had 
Jake Roberts, Mark Merrow, Rocky Marve, and the Stalker, defeating Crush, Goldust, Hunter Hearst, Helmsley, and Jerry Lawler. We then had Bret Hart defeating Steve Austin to become the new number one contender. We had Diesel, Farouk, Razor Ramon, and Vader. Uh, this is now not Helmet Farouk. He's now Nation of Domination Farouk. They div- they went up against uh, Flash Funk, Jimmy Snooker, Savio Vega, and Yokozuna. This is Yokozuna's final ever WWF pay-per-view. Definitely pay-per-view appearance. It might have been his last ever match as well. I don't know if he appeared on a... Raw or superstars afterwards, I don't know, but that's it for Yokozuna. Unfortunately, we will no longer see be seeing him. And then the main event is Circus Sid defeating Sean at Michaels to become the brand new heavyweight champion. Uh, a week later, a week later, WCW had their World War Three pay per view, uh, an event that I, a pay per view that I like. A lot of people don't like the multi man matches, uh, but I always enjoyed the World. Uh, World War 3 matches as I've said before I always enjoy multi-man matches because I didn't get to see the week-to-week TV back in the day so if I saw a pay-per-view I enjoyed a Royal Rumble because you got to see everybody I enjoyed a Survivor Series because you got to see everybody I enjoyed a World War 3 because you got to see everybody so uh, they are from the they are in the Norfolk Scope 10,313 are in attendance they do a 0.54 what did Survivor Series do I didn't say did a 0.58. Oh, good lord, that is close. So, um, Ultimo Dragon successfully defends the J Crown title against Rey Mysterio Jr. Chris Jericho defeats Nick Patrick. I'm about to sneeze. I muted that so you couldn't hear it. <laughs> Chris Jericho defeated Nick Patrick. Uh, the Giant defeated Jeff Jarrett. Harlem Heat defeated the amazing French Canadians. Uh, Sister Sherry defeated Colonel Robert Parker. Dean Malenko defeated Psychosis to successfully retain the WWE World Cruiserweight title. The uh, Outsiders successfully defended their WWE Tag Team titles against the Faces of Fear and the Nasty Boys. And then the th- uh, World War Three Three Ring Battle Royal was won by the Giant. It featured... I'm going to go through all these names... Alex Wright, Arn Anderson, Big Bubba Rogers, Bobby Eaton, Booker T, Bunkhouse Buck, Carl Ouellette, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, Sikupe, Dean Malenko, Darren Mandalas, Page, Disco Inferno, Eddie Guerrero, Galaxy, Hugh Morris, Ice Train, Jack Boot, Jacques uh, Rougeau, Jeff Jarrett, Jim Duggan, Jimmy Graffiti, Jim Powers, Joe Gomez, Johnny Grunge, Hooven to Guerrera, Chaos, Kevin Nash, Kevin Sullivan, Conan, La Parker, Lex Luger, Lord Stephen Regal, M. Wall Street, Marcus Alexander Bagwell, Mark Starr, Meng, Mike Enos, Mr. J.L., Pears, Pears, Prince Ikea, Ray Mysterio Jr., Rick Steiner, Roadbrook, Ron Studd, Ruckus, Ruckus? Who the hell is Ruckus? Robbie Rage, that's not Ruckus from CZW. Uh, Scott Hall, Scott Norton, Scotty Riggs, Sergeant Craig Pittman, Squire, David Taylor, Steve McMichael, Stevie Ray, Six, The Barbarian, The Renegade, Tony Rumble, Ultimate Dragon, that should be Ultimo Dragon. They spell Ultimate Dragon there as well. And Villano, number four. That is Tony Rumble from. Who trained like Taz and stuff into. Is he, did he train them? No, he didn't, but he was a promoter back in the day, wasn't he? So that is that. So that leads us then to this week. So the Raw before this, episode 188 of Monday Night Raw on the 9th of December, was held in the New Haven, Connecticut Coliseum. It was taped on October... It was taped the day after Survivor Series. Um, Doesn't have a rating... 4,968 attendance does a 4.62 on uh, Cage Match, and they're seeing Psycho Sid defeating Hunter Hearst Samsey by countout, Goldust defeating Bart Gunn, uh, Jesse James defeating Justin Bradshaw and Zebra Kaya, and then a no holds barred match to the Undertaker defeats Mankind. Uh, Nitro is the 65th edition of Nitro, does a 3.3 live uh, from Charlotte, North Carolina, 6,382 in attendance, and they are seeing uh, Emma Wall Street defeat Mike Enos, Hugh Morris defeat the Renegade, Dean Malenko defeat Jimmy Graffiti, who is Jimmy Graffiti? Oh, Jimmy Backland, uh, Jimmy Del Rey. Is that Jimmy Del Rey? That's Jimmy Del Rey. Jimmy Graffiti is Jimmy Del Rey. Uh, the Faces of Fear defeat the Nasty Boys. Chris Jericho defeated Bobby Eaton. Arn Anderson defeated Sergeant Craig Pittman. And in a United States heavyweight title quarter final match, DDP defeats Jeff Jarrett. So that leads us to now. Anything happen on Superstars? Let's just have a quick look on Superstars. Uh, Freddie Joe Floyd versus Farouk. Farouk defeated Freddie Joe Floyd. Vader defeated Tim McNeeny. McNeeny. Uh, 
Steve Austin defeated a stalker crush and Savvy Vega went to a double countout. So that leads us to tonight in your house 12. It's time. Michael Quinn's favourite pay per view if you listen to the OVP Patreon. We are going to be doing a 0.35 buy rate. We are going to be seen by 9,649 people. And we are in West Palm Beach, Florida, in the West Palm Beach Auditorium. We've got a free for all match. Before, we have got Rocky Maivere defeating Salvatore, but Salvatore Sincere by disqualification. We've then got some dark matches after. We're going to be seeing Bracus versus Dr. X, which is Tom Pritchard. Uh, Steve Austin defeats Goldust. And the post show match. So there's a priest. Okay. Shawn Michaels defeated Mankind. Uh, main the main card there is only uh, five matches we're going to be seeing tag titles intercontinental titles world titles and an Armageddon rules match and as always we will end the show uh, with a song from this day in the charts just to quickly tell you uh, just a few days ago uh, in Japan, so on the 11th of December, uh, FMW Year End Spectacular 1996 uh, in front of 7,923 uh, there is a few matches, uh, one of them being the FMW Independent Champion. The Gladiator defeated Wing Kane Mora to win the FMW Brass Knucks title. Uh, the main event is a Texas Street Fight Tornado Deathmatch with Atsushi Onita, Mr. Pogo and Masa. <coughs> Atsushi Onita, Mr. Pogo, Masasito, Ma- Ma- Masato Tanaka and Tetsuhara Kuroda defeating Terry Funk. The Headhunters and Hisakotsu Uya. Haibusa defeats Great Sasuke also on this card. And then on the 13th of December, War Japan have a show. Main evented by Genichiru Tenuru defeating Nobuki Takada. There's also J Crown Champion Ultimo Dragon defeating Rey Mysterio Jr. Keiji Katao defeats John Tenta. Lance Storm and Yuji Yasuruku defeating Tiger Mask and Masaki Mochizuku. Also on the card, Bam Bam Bigelow. Doink is on the card as well. And that is. That is that, ladies and gentlemen. So, without further ado, we're going to head down the ringside to see uh, what we've got in store for us on our last visit to WWF 1996. This is episode 11. Oh, uh, sorry. Episode 12 of In Your House Weekly. This is In Your House. It's time. I do apologise about the cold. Please do enjoy the show. The World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. For the longest time, I've thought about one thing. Being the World Wrestling Federation champion again and again and again. Sure, Psycho Sid is six foot nine, but I can promise you one thing. You will be excellently executed by the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. If I want one thing, I want that title. You're standing in my way. <laughs> Listen, I don't care. Because I am a man. And now, Milton Bradley Karate Fighters presents WWF In Your House. It's time. Welcome, everyone, to West Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome to the West Palm Beach Auditorium. Welcome to the WWF In Your House. It's time. Yes, indeed. Welcome, everyone. Vince McMahon here along with Jerry the King Lawler. And we got good old JR as well. Yes, we got action and plenty of it. Of course, the World Wrestling Federation title up for grabs. Oh, I can't wait, big man. Bret Hart against Psycho Sid. And what you failed to mention is that Shawn Michaels is going to come out here and help color commentate. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If he does, if he comes out here, I'm not going to be responsible for what oh, happens. Oh, boy. And I'm telling you. And joining us as well, JR. Over here, we've got Arturo Rivera, along with Carlos Cabrera, and, of course, Hugo Semenovich. 
providing our Spanish commentary. Those guys are going to do a great job. And I'll tell you something. I said it earlier. I think Bret Hart's going to win the title for the fourth time tonight, the WWE title. I think he's going to do it by submission. It will be a first for Psycho Sid to give up. I think it's going to happen right here tonight. All right, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Opening things up in your house. It's time. Here comes Leaf Cassidy. So hopefully you can... I don't think I've gone deaf. I think it's the, the audio is a bit uh, dodgy. It's only on one side because it's showing up on my uh, OBS is one side. So I don't think I've gone deaf. But we've got uh, Leaf Cassidy, the artist uh, soon to be known as Al Snow. Going up against one uh, Flash Funk. This is uh, Flash Funk's... He debuted at Survivor Series, so he had his last match in ECW um, on the 16th of November. Sorry, he had his last uh, four matches <laughs> at ECW on the 16th of November to remember. He defeated JT Smith in the Loser Leaves Town, then he defeated Hack Myers, then he defeated Devin Storm, then he lost to Luis Baculi in the Loser Leaves Town match. He then made his WWF debut the next night in Survivor Series. Since then, he's... Uh, defeated the Goon, Brian Walsh was part of a 24-man battle royal in the house show. He then had a couple of dates in Japan for TPW. He lost to the Great Kabuki he, as he, when he performed as the Black Uzuma. And then the next night, or the next day, he uh, teamed with Crusher Takahashi and defeated Shoka and Akikaho Masuda. And this is his first match back on American soil. Like we said, he's going against Leaf Cassidy, the artist uh, soon to be known as Al Snow, also known as Shinobi and Avatar. He has been a rocker for quite a while, I think. We haven't, don't think we've really seen him, have we? He was at Survivor. Sorry, he was at SummerSlam. We haven't seen him on any in your houses. We're seeing uh, Vince. Uh, Dancing with Flash Funk. Vince McMahon showing his fucking stupidness off. So yeah, so the he has been here as a new rocker since. When did the new rockers start? New rockers ended by the end of the year. They have no more. And they had their first match together on the 20th of February, 1996. So they've been... I don't think they're now... They're now not a team. Well, they are a team still, but not as much. They've been currently been feuding with... Furnace and Lathon. And they appear on the Monday Night Raw tomorrow, and that is their last. That is their last appearance as the new Rockers. They lose to Cibernetico and Piroth, because we are in that period where um, AAA are trading. Well, they're not really trading talent. They're bringing talent into the WWF. We've got the Funkettes, Jupiter and Jiving all over the ring. Jimmy Corderas is going to be our referee. Red and white, red and white, red, white and blue ropes. We've still got the In Your House entranceway. So Flash Frank is going to be wearing a purple shiny singlet. Big thigh high silver boots. Leith Cassidy wearing the uh, sort of the rockers black and green singlet white boots. Backgrounds to go with their high flying aerial abilities. I know the Leith Cassidy was looking to try to ground. Flash maybe use them. So that's formerly known as Two Cold Scorpio is here. He's going to be here for a while, I think. Uh, he's here. He's well. He's still wrestling now, I think. But he's here till ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Uh, his last WWF appearance is the thirty-first of January, nineteen ninety-nine, teaming with Bob Holly, losing against Christian and Edge. He then goes to, he has a shot in ECW. Um, and then goes back to Japan. I think he teamed, doesn't he team with Vader at some point? 
I think he teams with Vader. Yeah, no way they team in Vader. Still, two Cops could be still wrestling uh, today. His last uh, on cage match, his last appearance was the 20th of April 2024. He defeated Joey Janela at GCW's How High show in the Ukrainian Culture Center in Los Angeles, California. He's also the current SPO heavyweight champion, defeating Homicide. Oh no, he's lost that. He lost that. That's, that's now Johnny Cashmere. So no, yeah, he's not he, he's not that champion anymore. That hasn't been updated. But the reaction in the ring has started to look by Leaf Cassidy. Escaped by Two Cold Scorpio under a wrist lock. Oh, back over by Leaf. Full on drag twist now. Another warm day here in the UK. I'm recording this on the 18th of July. You'll hear it in a week or two, I think. And uh, you know you can have it next week. I think so. I'm, just, I'm pretty uh, close to being caught up on in your houses. I'm, I'm ahead on everything else, but these are a little bit behind due to issues you'll hear about next week on uh, shows. Um, but yes, nice warm day, 26, 27 degrees here. It's quarter past seven at night, and I'm a bit sweaty. <laughs> but I'm sitting here with a nice Budweiser and a Coke Zero, so we should be okay. Full on Dragon Twist again by uh, Flash. I'm probably going to end up calling him Scorpio. So. Escape by Leaf Cassidy into a hammerlock. And, uh, Scoobos, uh, Funk's got hold of the head and beautiful uh, meh escape. Ducks to clothesline. O'Connor roll, but, but no, backflip by Flash Funk. Leapfrog by Flash Funk as Leaf, Leaf Cassidy comes over the top and scourish through the legs. Does Leaf, he's safe. Double leg takedown. Kip, kip away by Flash Funk. F bloody uh, beautiful arm drag takedown there by Scorpio. I don't give a fuck. Call him Scorpio. Whatever. We all know who Flash Funk is. And when one man can't continue, folks, it is absolutely over. Maybe in more ways than one. Irish up corner, corner by Leaf. Flash goes over the top rope. The headstand. Big right hand on his own apron. Swings himself back. Oh, no. Slips a bit off the top rope. Middle rope uh, backflip. One, two. Kick out. Arm drag takedown again. Most flash funk. Jimmy Cordero's down there checking. I say, if at first you succeed, try not to act too surprised. <laughs> Wait a minute now, King. What? I, you're not actually known for your aerial tactics. Well, I can be. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Leaf now working. Flash Funk over in the corner. Whips him corner to corner. Funk goes. Oh, it gets caught. And the head says, oh, no. Face first power bomb there by Leaf Cassidy. Leaf Cassidy, does he? What does he do when he doesn't? When he's not a rocker? Uh, I know he becomes Al Snow, but not quite yet. Um, oh, he's Leaf Cassidy all the way up until July. Uh, yeah, all the way to July. Then he goes to ECW to become Al Snow, and then he's back full time in the WWF. Uh, King of the Ring 98 as Al Snow are we getting over a plaque I wasn't looking oh springboard uh, somersault plancher over the top rope there by uh, Leaf Cassidy flash rank down in trouble he's now back up to his feet and he goes, good lord, what a run and close off by Leaf Cassidy. <laughs> Shades of uh, great mooter against Antonio Inoki. Leaf Cassidy uh, doing a 100 yard dash. Smash and flash with a uh, clothesline. There's someone with an ECW sign on the ground. Al Snow now r f rolls uh, Flash Frank in the ring. I just called him Al Snow, but who cares? 
Crash getting behind Flash Funk. I would suggest he could uh, use a little assistance in some capacity. Well, he pro probably could right now, Leaf. Is, I think uh, waste a little time. Oh, oh drop kick by Leaf Cassidy to the back of the uh, back of the neck of Flash Funk. There goes the cover one, two, kick out. First chin look now by Cassidy. Crowd still behind Flash Funk. Oh, kick to the head by Flash with those long old legs. Smashing Leaf Cassidy in the forehead with that big old boot. Those thigh high boots, they must have been comfortable to fucking wrestle them. Oh. Flip flop and fly, and Flash Funk knocks down Leaf Cassidy. All right, JR said that. Oh, kick by Cassidy. So Cassidy's right back up. He's going for a power bomb. Oh, no. Flash Funk gets out of it, lands on his feet. Bigger end. Flash Funk is getting funky, Vince. Oh, beautiful standing drop kick there by Scorpio Man. Off the ropes. Over the top. Off the ropes. And a. Good lord! Sky high power bomb by Leaf Cassidy. Shades of Dilo Brown. Both men down. Jimmy Corderas now applying the stand and ten count. There's a submission maneuver right here. Leaf may have. He doesn't have that. The front face hook good enough. She'll be a little bit lower. And underneath that chin, it'd be all she wrote. Right. Flash Funk trying to make a maneuver here, trying to find some sort of counter. And Leaf Cassidy really taking it to Flash Funk. And thus far, I would suggest that uh, Leaf is very impressive in single competition. Not that he wasn't in tag competition, but I think even more in single competition. I think maybe we've underestimated all my. <laughs> and now Leaf takes a page from Flash Funk. High risk for no. Headbutt by, no, uh, right hand by uh, Flash, kick. Oh, little spinner Rooney type manoeuvre into a big right hand, knocking down Leaf Cassidy. Breaking those by Leaf Cassidy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, Flash Funk ducks the uh, crescent kick. Hits the ropes and a handspring. Oh, handspring kick, beautifully done. Leaf Cassidy down to the outside. I think Flash Funk is going to fly, maybe. If Cassie's on the outside, cameraman's not showing it, and a... Oh, good lord, over the top rope. Splash! By Flash Funk. No hard hard cam footage there. It was purely from the camera on the ring, so you didn't really get to see what he was doing. Flash Funk rolls Leaf Cassie back in the ring, follows him inside. Flash Funk scoops him up, slams him down. Flash going up to the top with his back to Leaf Cassidy. Beautiful moonsault by Flash Funk. Good lord. One, two. Kick out by Leaf Cassidy. Kick out by Leaf Cassidy. What a moonsault by Leaf by Flash Funk. Both of them up to the feet. Leaf Cassidy spits, uh, ducks the spinning clothesline. Uh, ducks the spinning kick and then nails Flash Funk with a clothesline. Knees over the arms. One, two. No. One, two. Two. No. Leaf Cassidy with a pin, one, two, no, Flash Funk with a reverse, one, two, no, kick up by Alan Leaf Snow, one, two, Leaf Snow, <laughs> one, two, by Funk, no, both men back up, Flash Funk ducks a clothesline, oh, ends a gary of sorts by Flash Funk, takes Leaf Cassidy Dune, both men down, both men have taken a lot out of each other in this match, Leaf Cassidy now up, Flash Funk whips him corner to corner, Follows him in. Oh, sting a splash of sorts in the corner. And a beautiful back suplex by Leaf, uh, by Flash Funk. He's motioning for something. He's got Leaf Cassidy positioned in the corner on the canvas. Flash Funk goes to the top rope. Flash Funk goes to the top rope. And... 450! One, two, three. Flash Funk wins. Flash Funk wins. and as they earned over Leaf Cassidy.
Leave Cassidy proving he's a tremendous competitor and in individual action, but not quite on the caliber of Flash Fox. I'll tell you something, it was a great matchup. A lot of high-risk offense as we predicted, and we're gonna see great things, I think, from both these athletes. And as it looks, especially Flash Funk. All right, Flash Funk, ladies and gentlemen, getting it on. Let's take a look, a look here. King, unbelievable. What was that, almost a triple gainer, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's another look at it. One, two, wow! Three. Great athleticism, balance, and leverage. The risk taker, Flash Buck, successful here. Yeah, and Flash Buck has this whole capacity crowd getting funded. Shooting star press, beautifully executed. Look out. Whoa, Flash Buck. I'm sure we'll be seeing a great deal more of this exciting WWF superstar. And speaking of superstars, the WWF superstar line is open right now. There you see so... JR called it a shooting star press. I'm pretty sure it was a 450. Shooting star press. Our pressures where they sort of go from f like yeah you know what yeah it's definitely 450. In post-match interviews plus some surprises, one thing we know you can call 1-900-7374 WWF in the states and in Canada 1-900-451-3332. It's on option eight, and another thing we can say conclusively, Steve Austin is in the house. And that's not good for Brett the Hitman Hart, and not good perhaps as well for the British Bulldog. All right, here we go. It's Tag Team Championship action coming at you. I cannot believe that these people in this, in this arena are booing these two men. Why would they boo two fine, young, upstanding athletes? Because they're not who they think they are. They're not that. They're not Diesel and Razor. They're imposters. Goddamn imposters. But they've been, still been able to call Razor and Diesel because of the trademarks and blah, blah, blah. We all know what's going on on the other side. We don't need to be reminded. The pyro goes off his big daddy cool, raises the uh, the black leather gloved clad hand. And Razor Ramona giving his pyros off as well. JR is uh, giving him some, some uh, a push. On the commentary. Vince, yes, indeed, here with Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, their manager, Clarence Mason. The titles are on the line in just a few moments, gentlemen, and as of late, I have to say that you have shown no continuity at all as a team, a real lack of focus, and Bulldog, I think the cause of that lack of focus, I know, is here tonight, and that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't care if Stone Cold Steve Austin is here tonight. I'm going to have my eye on Razor and Diesel. Stone Cold, if you're anywhere around, I'm coming out to get you. But if your thoughts are not on, uh, if your you thoughts are not up right here, you quit poking your nose in our business, quit trying to rattle the bulldog. Right. We know what we have to do. We got to worry about Razor and Diesel. Stone Cold is not on his mind. So quit trying to make trouble. Quit trying to wreck our game plan. Don't worry about Stone Cold. We got to worry about Razor and Diesel first. We've got the World Wrestling Federation titles right here. And this is where they're staying, on the British Bulldog and the King of Hearts, the Slammy Award winning Owen Hart. All right. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. The Bulldog and Owen Hart, tag team champions at the moment. The title will be up for grabs. Jack Doan is going to be our referee. Diesel uh, wearing black and silver singlet. Razor Ramon wearing purple tights, purple boots. And here come the tag team champions, Owen Hart. And the British Bulldog, obviously, by Sansa Bulldog's been having a problem with Steve Austin. So, see footage from Superstars earlier today. Steve Austin's in the ring, celebrating a victory over the Stalker. Owen Hart and Bulldog are in the aisle way. They get in the sh and they're getting attacked by Razor and Diesel. Obviously, that happened earlier today. Earlier today. <laughs> Owen Hart with his slammy. These guys being brought to the ring by Clarence Mason. Owen uh, black and pink singlet, black boots. David Boy wearing red and blue trunks, white boots with tassels. Crew cut bulldog. So obviously this race remote is uh, Rick. Is it Rick Bogner, who is Big Titan? On the independent scene, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, Big Titan. He, uh, Rick Titan, Big Titan. 
He has been wrestling since 1989. Predominantly, uh, he had a career in Japan, FMW, team with the likes of Horace Boulder, the Gladiator, Tarzan Goto, been in the uh, street matches, street fights, all that kind of stuff. He has been in the WWF since. Uh, 1996, obviously. So he has his first WWF match the 23rd of September. Uh, going to get Savio Vega, I believe, because the in your house they Diesel and Razor attacked Savio Vega after his match with Justin Upbrecher. He then has his last WWF match 20th of. 20th of February. He defeats Ricky Rocket, whoever the fuck that is, in a house show match. And then uh, USWA, New Japan, has his last match in Stampede in June of 2000. And then obviously Diesel is uh, Glenn Jacobs, the artist formerly known as Unibomber, the artist formerly known as Isaac Ankham DDS. He's been here quite a while now. I uh, don't know how far I have to go back now. So he's been in the WWF since August of 1995 uh, as Isaac uh, Ankham DDS. And he's there till. Does he, he does become 1996. Isaac Yankum is in the Royal Rumble. Isaac Yankum, Isaac Yankum. Yeah, Isaac Yankum still in, 19, in the spring of 1996. Still in the Jesus Christ, still in 1996. So he has his last match as Isaac Ankum on the 12th of September in Johannesburg, South Africa against Henry Godwin in a house show. He's there Diesel on the 23rd of September. So it's a very short period that he's Isaac Ankum with Diesel. Television wise, he's last seen on television as Isaac Ankum on the 29th of my April, he loses to Ultimate Warrior. So, TV, it's what, five months, but in reality, not that long. And then he became he's diesel until he's diesel until diesel until diesel until. His last WWF appearance as Diesel is 12th or oh, that's AWA, AA, AAA, isn't it? USWA. So his last appearance as Diesel is the 24th of June 1997 in a Loser Leaves Town match in USWA against Razor Ramon. And then a week later he becomes Doomsday. But his last WWF appearance on television is the Royal Rumble. So... On television, uh, on television, it's Royal Rumble. His Diesel. Then the next time he's seen on television is as Kane. So, so Steve Austin is now back in the about. He's at ringside. We've just missed uh, Peer off and Cipernetico. Bulldog now going outside, attacking Steve Austin on the outside. Bulldog got off the pin of Razor, and now he's now attacking Steve Austin. Oh, the lights have no. Nope. Look, that's just the camera that's gone out. Bulldog and Austin rolling around on the floor. Here comes Tony Guerrero. Here comes some referees. Earl Hepner, Renny Goulet, Jack Briscoe. Look at this, Frankie. They're fucking agents. They have been separated. Austin and Bulldog have been separated by the agents and the referees. Bulldog now going back in the ring. Now getting attacked by Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon with a corner corner Irish whip. Follows him in. Oh, big close on in the corner by Razor. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Razor now with a big right hand. Spear, big spinner right hand. Down goes Bulldog. Bulldog. So Steve Austin has now been pushed down the hallway. Bulldog now with a full arm dragon twist. Tagging Owen. Owen goes to the top rope. Oh, elbow across the arm of Razor. Full arm dragon twist again by Owen. Now ringing the arm of Razor. Oh, and again. Full arm dragon twist. Razor now in trouble. Razor pushes Owen into the ropes. Irish whips him. Owen. Oh, good lord. Razor took Owen's head off there with that clothesline. Oh, elbow smashed by Razor. Kicking now Owen in the corner. 
Parachute coming up, going at corner by Razor. Oh, hard, Owen goes in, but Owen moves out of the way. As their running elbow came in, Owen goes up to the top rope. And beautiful top rope drop kick by the King of Hearts. Goes to the cover, one, two, kick out by Razor with Tharta. Owen off the ropes, over the top. Diesel pulls the ropes down and Owen goes flying at the outside, good lord. Diesel now picks up Owen Hart. And... Rams him back first at the ring post. Good lord. Referee was distracted by Bulldog and Razor. And the ring post and then throws him right back in. Being admonished by the official who did not see all of that. We know how uh, delicate the kidneys are. Just ask Ahmed Johnson. And that's exactly the focus of that uh, maneuver right into the steel ring post. Owen Hart, the quickest man in this match. But you couldn't tell it right now in this position. Oh no, Razor, Diesel, obviously, doing a wear down Owen Hart. And they're doing just that, Razor and Diesel. Focusing on the lower back. No wasting, no wasting motion. Focus on the lower back. Watch, watch Big Daddy Cool here. Guarantee he'll go to work on the back. Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Uh oh, look out, here we go. Just as you said, Owen Hart can't get out of this head. Oh, sidewalk slam. What a monster this Diesel is. You covered him. You got to cover him. Oh, no, no, no. I think Diesel wants to punish Owen Hart. I think Diesel thinks he can have this one anytime he wants it. Well, he's not paid to think. He could be underestimating the skills of Owen Hart. And by the way, Jim Ross, you don't have to shout into this microphone. Diesel, oh, no, no, Diesel's tagged out, Razor Ramon now, and clobbering, continuing the clobbering in the corner. Razor now going for a pump handle slam. He's got Owen cinched up, and, oh, no, over the head, but a uh, pump handle slam, good lord. That was a very different manoeuvre. Razor goes for cover, one, two, kick out. As we said, Jack Doon, the referee. Razor now with a uh, chin lock. I'm twisting the head of, uh, twisting the head of uh, Razor. Oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. Now tagged in is Diesel. Oh, big round of the gut by Diesel. Irish by Big Daddy Cool. Big boot down goes Owen. Owen has been in this match quite a long time now. Diesel with a cover one, two, kick it by Owen. Oh, Diesel misses the elbow. I can't hear what they're saying. I'm personally offended by these fans. Those discouraging remarks about Diesel. I'm not sure what they're saying. Diesel uh, shoving Bulldog off the apron, now allowing the double team in the corner. While well, the referee tries to get Bulldog back out. I do so. I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen, about my, uh, my voice. I trouble having a cold. Who has a cold in the fucking summertime? Good lord. Oh, Owen grabbed by D Diesel, grabbed Owen by the singlet and pulled him back in the corner as Owen was firing up on Razor Ramon. Diesel now tagged in. Rams Owen head first at the top turnbuckle. Irish rip corner to corner. Oh, but Owen managed to get a back elbow. Rocking Diesel. Oh, and a foot as he came running in. Owen in the carry. Takes the big man down. It's not an IQ test. Yeah, Owen I don't Hart think. must tag the British Bulldog. Owen's oh, a long way. Long way from this corner. Owen Hart, I don't believe, knows exactly Owen needs to get that tag to Davey Boy. Dizzle gets a tag to Razor. Owen, Owen gets a tag, Owen gets a tag. Bulldog in, Bulldog in. Big right hand by Bulldog, and again. Irish shoot by Davey Boy. Big close on, down goes Razor. And again. One for Diesel, holy moly. Bulldog now with the challengers. Double knock and knocker. David Boy picks up Razor. Oh, just slams him down. I thought he was going for the poor slam, maybe. Beautiful leg drop by David Boy. One, two, kick up by Razor. David Boy now. Sets Razor up with a beautiful suplex. Goes to cover one. Two. Oh, Diesel broke the pin up. Owen comes in though. Attack Diesel from behind. Stomps on Razor. 
<laughs> or four men in the ring. All four men on opposing corner. Two men on opposing corners. Razor and Diesel. No. Oh, high cost. No, Diesel caught Owen. Drop kick by Bulldog Senzo and Diesel to the outside. Razor and Bulldog are the legal men. De Razor working away on Bulldog in the corner. Diesel and Owen fighting on the outside. Irish whip corner, corner by Razor. Bulldog evades. Bulldog scoops him up, puts him on the shoulder. Diesel thrown at the ring post. No. Nope. Big boot by Razor. He's going for the knife. No, Ray. Uh, spinning hell kick by Owen. Jack knife pin by Bulldog. One, two, three. Bulldog and Owen win. Bulldog and Owen win. Uh. That's fucking bullshit. By God, by God, that's bullshit. Austin now, Austin comes running into the ring and attacks Bulldog. Chuck blocks him. Bulldog is down. And took the chalks out from the Bulldog, and Stone Cold has a big smile on his face. Stone Cold, who was embarrassed earlier on when he came out here, the Bulldog really took it to Stone Cold. And now look what Stone Cold Steve Austin has done. Bulldog may have uh, sustained some ligament damage in that left knee thanks to the chop block by Stone Cold Steve Austin. And we might have the ability to show you that again. Stone Cold Steve Austin asserting himself as we thought that he might in the matchup. However, when the British Bulldog just pummeled Stone Cold and caught him by surprise, Officials were able to move Stone Cold back to the locker room, and Stone Cold watched every second. You talk about someone who's cold and calculating. That unquestionably describes Stone Cold Steve Austin. We're taking another look at it right here. Look, the Bulldog with his back turned, and you're going to see Stone Cold Steve Austin explode here momentarily. And look at Ooh. Owen Hart. Now, I don't understand. Wait a minute. There's something wrong here. I don't what know do exactly. Mean? I don't know. Something's going on here. Clarence Mason with the tag team champions. They are still champions. But the Bulldog, a little worse for the wear. Well, I think the Razor and Diesel deserve a rematch. I can lobby for that. It's going to be. Hey, how about hey, this? Yeah, this is a very uh, unique. I, I uh, think the well, nation of domination has taken name? over. They certainly have taken over the. America Online. Wow. America, our uh, fans, you'd like to uh, join us. For exclusive coverage of uh, tonight's In Your House, it's time. You can join us live on Cyberspace on AOL. And all the superstars will be dropping by. You can chat with them you on really America Online. You understand all that online stuff? Uh, well, King, I'm not very computer literate. How do you spell domination, JR? Uh, D O M something. I think you're a speed bump on the information superhighway. I think you're right. Well, anyway, join us on AOL. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Ahmed Johnson. What's he doing here? Man, you can hear this ovation. The rafters are rattling in West Palm Beach here at the Auditorium King. Ahmed Johnson, we know what he has on his mind. One man, one man only, and you know I'm talking about Farouk. Whoa. Well, Ahmed Johnson may be thinking about only one man in Farouk, but he's going to have to contend with an entire nation, the whole nation of domination. He's back, and ladies and gentlemen, a big announcement. And I know, Ahmed, you're counting the days until the Royal Rumble. On January 19, finally, it will happen. The leader of the nation of domination, Farouk, will meet Ahmed Johnson. You know, first of all, this goes beyond anything that you can imagine. I've lost my girlfriend, I've lost my car, I've lost my house, 
I lost everything due to this injury. Only thing I got now is my fans. That's all I have. That ain't much. For that, I promise you, Farouk will feel the pain of my man Johnson through his face. And with all due respect, you almost lost something else, and that's your career. And of course, that leads us to the injured kidney. Can you give us the status on that? Let me tell you this, Mr. McMahon. At four meters of my career and my life, before I met Johnson Go, my life was over a long time ago. That's what he don't understand. My life was over a long time ago. All I live for is these people out here. That's all I live for. Well, Dr. Well, Dr. Come on, things like home entertaining, exceptional things like the World Wrestling Federation, Welcome to the, Royal Rumble. the WWF Royal Rumble, 30 awesome superstars in a tremendous over-the-top rope battle. You won't believe the incredible action right in your own living room. WWF Royal Rumble, live on pay-per-view. was a very intense young man, Ahmed Johnson, who no doubt is looking forward to locking up with Farouk at the Royal Rumble. And speaking of the Royal Rumble, San Antonio, Texas, JR, the Alamo Dome. There are going to be 70,000 World Wrestling Federation fans right there watching it all. Well, folks, say, they say everything's bigger in Texas, and they can't get any bigger than this. 70,000 fans in the Alamo Dome is going to be so special. And you should try to be a part of it. And you can be a part of it, ladies and gentlemen. But there's the number on your screen, 210-224-9600. That's Ticketmaster in Texas. Fans coming literally from all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing like being there live. And yes, we invite you to join us live at the 70,000 seat Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, one of the greatest towns in the good old U.S. of A that there is. Yeah, bring the family, enjoy the Riverwalk, the Alamo, and all the hospitality that San Antonio has to offer. And I'll tell you something, that Ahmed Johnson uh, uh, Farouk match is going to be a slobber knocker. Yeah, but that's not all, right, King? Well, you know, we're going to see The Undertaker going against 
Vader. Take a look at this. What I'm wondering is, how is The Undertaker making long-range plans for, for the Royal Rumble? He hasn't even gotten past the Armageddon match yet. Good question, Jared. What about it? Well, I'll tell you something. It is uh, somewhat optimistic, perhaps. That would yeah. be a great matchup in the Alamo Dome if you can be there with us live. But we've also got some great competitors that have already entered the Royal Rumble. We, uh, we've talked about Cibernetico, Pirock, of course, the champion of champions in Mexico, plus Stone Cold Steve oh, Austin. Oh, my goodness. Unquestionably, one of the favorites, I would say. got to be. And, and what a storybook story it would be for the rookie, Rocky Maivia, to take San Antonio in the Rumble. Yes, and the other guys from the WWE wild and crazy. Now I'm talking about Lance Turner. And then another guy that the last time he came into the Rumble. There's an issue with the uh, video. Jake the Snake is being advertised as being in the Rumble. But I don't think he is, is he? I don't think he's in the 97 one. I think he's gone. Uh, uh, Rumble... 97? Oh, Rumble 97. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, no. They're back, but there's very poor audio, no audio at all now, so. Uh, is da -da 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 Jake in the Rumble? Well, Rumble. <laughs> I can't remember him being in the Rumble. Jerry Lord. Uh, oh, no, Jake Roberts, he is in it. Good Lord. Hey. Uh, when did he come in? Did he come in? Oh, Steve Austin eliminated Jake Roberts. Oh, right. oh wow. And then they're talking about this again. Yeah, Jake Roberts crushes being advertised for the Rumble. That'd be fun. Starburst Foot Twist is the yes uh, is the sponsor. Oh, and Taco, Sammy Vega's got his own sponsor. Taco Bell. How uh, how racist. <laughs> Allegedly, it doesn't happen in uh, 1997, does it? It goes all goes terribly, terribly wrong. Because somebody loses their smile. Rip. For Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the Intercontinental title means more than a blue chip stock in his rather impressive portfolio. It symbolizes the one thing he cannot buy. Membership in the most elite of all clubs, the athletic aristocracy of the World Wrestling Federation. I can't stand people that think they're better than other people. I mean, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, it's almost like he's, he's lowering himself even to compete. For the wild man, the intercontinental title is a cherished symbol of athletic achievement. There is no greater honor than to be called champion. Helmsley and Merrow's first conflict was not in the ring. It was over the most stunning of Helmsley's many companions, Sable. When Sable stood up to the boorish Helmsley, the blue blood was left red-faced. He's got Helmsley! No one had ever treated a Helmsley like that. Sable then united with the wild man, adding insult to an already injured ego. Retribution was sought in the ring, but none was found. So Helmsley devised an insidious plan. First, Helmsley used Kurt Henning to entrust himself to Mark Merrill. Shortly thereafter, the wild man reached the pinnacle of his career. It was all a part of Helmsley's ingenious plan. Triple H then persuaded his unwitting accomplice to pull off the perfect hook. Mark Merrow, the stand-up kind of guy that he is, offered to wrestle you in my place. If the belt's on the line, I agree. The match is made. Let's do it. As the match unfolded, so did Helmsley's master plan. Helmsley got what he wanted, 
not only retribution on Merrow and Sable, but the title as well. Mr. Helmsley was in no further need of assistance, and so he dismissed his less-than-perfect servant. Now, Hunter has leverage and status in the World Wrestling Federation. For Triple H, it's time to revel in the glory of the Intercontinental title. For the Wild Man, it's time to. Time to regain what is rightfully his. Time to put Helmsley in his place. Tonight, it's time to find out which superstar will carry the Intercontinental title into the new year. So Mark Mero is now coming down the aisle, being led by Sable. He's going to be challenging for the Intercontinental title that he once held. Going up against Hunter Hurst Helmsley, Triple H. Oh, lovely Pyro's gone up against Swirly Burly Pyro's. Who's the referee? I think Timmy White. Uh, wait for the lights to come up, we'll see. No, I think Earl. Yeah, I think it's Earl. Great. So Sable takes the jacket away from Mark Merrow. And we now await the entrance of the champion. Yeah, Earl's ref. We still got the uh La da 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 Entrance for Hunter Hurst Elmsley. Jimmy Swing a Ruby, a nice red maroon sort of velvet coat. Robe, if you will. Jimmy's looking very good with the with a belt round his waist. Suits him, does it go to the title? No valets, no accomplices to the ring for Mr. Helmsley, he's there by himself. Oh, no, we lost audio again. No audio at all. Oh, back in. It was a blimp. The uh, kar is it karate fighters blimp or something like that. E yes, the karate fighters blimp. Pompicity. Pompicity. So the world man wearing a. Uh, Black trunks, black boots. I think there's a hint of no, no, white boots. Black and black and silver trunks, white boots. Black tights, black boots for Triple H. With a sort of a, a dash of red around the knees. Kind of a type, but we are underway. So they look by Triple H. I'm not going behind now by Triple H. <laughs> Mirror with a reversal. So I'm going to take down by Triple H and Ray on the mat. Reversed by Mark Mirror with a hammerlock on the mat. Back up to the feet. We're still with the hammerlock applied. Triple H reverses it. Top wrist lock. Pompesity. Triple H now trying to fight Mark Mirror, but Mark Mirror is using his. Got an upper hand on the strength on the top wrist lock. So off by Triple H. Shoulder tackle down goes. Got to settle down a little bit. I don't know. I would suggest to you that the demeanor of the wild man is nothing compared to Brett the Hitman Hart. Wound tighter than a two dollar watch. Oh, right he now, is Gary. in a foul mood. However, sometimes that's what it takes. And yes. I would suggest that Wildman is a bit more aggressive than we have seen him in the past. Look at him trying to keep Hemsley down, keep the momentum from the other side, but that doesn't work. Hemsley back up, Hemsley coming off the rope. Wildman now. 
If at first you don't succeed, try the hip toss again. Uh, big drop kick there by Mero, who takes down Helmsley. And a big clothesline sends Helmsley to the outside. Mero's going to go for that uh, over the top rope. Nope. Fake out by Mero over the top. Double axe off the apron. Mero now grabs Helmsley. Rolls him into the ring. Follows him inside. Helmsley now begging off in the corner. Oh, kick by Helmsley. Big hand. Puts Mero in the corner. Oh, another hand. Oh, a beautiful knife edge chop. Helmsley corner, corner, Irish whip. Note reversed by Miro. Helmsley go, hits hard, comes out and back. Body drop by Miro. Helmsley now back in the corner. Miro pummeling him. Standing on the second rope on the entire. Ten count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, Triple H catches him. Oh, drops him face first over the corner. Buckle. Holy moly. Both men down. Earl applying a stand and ten count. After that, then drop Mr. Perfect. I mean, Hunter Hurst films, they got what he wanted. Uh oh, set up now. Wild man Mark Perfect, ready for the hole. Did you see that? Great elevation there by the wild man. Helmsley is hurt. Now let's see how quickly Merrill can capitalize. Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Up on his feet somehow. Here comes the wild man right after him. Oh, no, no. oh, come on. Oh, oh come cheap on. shot, that oh. one. Yeah. That was a very gentlemanly. Well, if Sable wants it, she can have him. <laughs> Hunter Hurst Helmsley, here we go. Oh, oh. Remember, hit hard and the steel steps. <coughs> Excuse me, good lord. Husky, I am a husky individual. <laughs> Mero hit uh, hard on the steel steps, holding his ass cheek. Triple H now back on the outside. He went in and broke the count. He's now back on the inside. Mero, uh, Sable's trying to give Mero some words of encouragement. Triple H has got a chair, but Earl Hepner grabs the chair and pulls it off Triple H. Comes in now shoving Hepner. Shove him, fuck him off to the fucking Guantanamo Bay. Sable gets in the way, and Mero gets thrown into the steel steps front first this time. Gets rolled in now. Latitude or longitude? Hey, hey, hey. Triple H grabs Mero, the audio's gone again. Triple H grabs him. Oh, backbreaker! Continue to work over that back that's been damaged by uh, being hit by those steel steps. Lovely curtsy by Triple H in the middle of the ring. Rearranging his uh, boxes. Triple H grabs Mero. Grabs him again. Oh, another big backbreaker. Triple H telling Hepner to check Mero to make sure he's okay, can, 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 can continue even. Triple H picks him up. Iris whips him. Tilt and whoa, tilt and whirl back, Braga. Bill if he's done by Triple H. One, two, kick out. Abdominal stretch now applied by Triple H in the middle of the ring. Was he? I think he went a bit too close to the ropes, but Sable's trying to give him a man some encouragement. Wonder if Gula Monsoon would like this uh, being applied. I think the toe is hooked, so I think he's okay. Earl Hepner down there checking. Crowd getting behind Mero. Triple H, very yeah, he's close to the ropes. He's now using the ropes for liverage. You can't call what you don't see. Pompeii there. I stuck my dick in Missy Hart. Missy Hart. <laughs> Rode me like a red headed stepchild. <laughs> Fuck <Back> out. <laughs> Filthy bastards. Do you still with the uh, bone wheel stretch applied? I don't know if you can hear this. Very poor audio. Very 
very low. Triple H with the ropes again. Earl sees it. Earl kicks away. Triple H gets in the face of Hepner. Good. Shoving match now between Hepner and Earl. A few that would last, last a lifetime, these two. <laughs> Hepner getting in Triple H's face. Earl Hepner is uh, telling him, beat me after the show, I'll sell you some t shirts. Ba. Bow. Triple H picks up Miro, puts him in the corner. Irish ship note reversed by Miro. Triple H comes out. Oh, but Triple H's got the boot up in time. Triple H now second round on the inside. Triple H wasting a bit of time here. What's he going to go for? Elbow drop or something? Uh, oh, Miro got the boot up. Miro got the boot up. Back up to the feet, just Marrow's woozy though. Very woo, very woos. Oh, oh, inverted atomic drop by Marrow. Marrow now pulled himself up through the ropes or via the ropes. Irish up now by Triple H. Oh, Marrow ducks the clothesline. Oh, big flying clothesline there by Marrow. Both men down. Irish up corner, corner up, so Triple H does the old Ray Stevens bump upside down and back down to his feet. Kick by Miro. Miro off the ropes. Big knee lift by Mark Miro. Shades of Mr. Wrestling 2. <laughs> Irish whip by Miro. Reverse by Triple H. Catches him. And they, oh, flying head says a reversal there by Mark Miro. Looked like Triple H was going to go for that tilt world back break again. One, two, kick out by uh, Triple H. Mero now pummeling away on Triple H in the corner. Nice even pace match this has been. Very nice. Very nice matches so far. All the, all the matches, all three matches have been very good so far on this show. Triple H blocks the right hand. He's sat on the top rope. Mero put him up there. Oh, Mero punches him. And again. And again. Mero pummeling away on Triple H. Mero now going up to the top rope. He's going for a Hurricane Rana, maybe. Uh Beautiful Hurricane Runner off the top rope. Triple H down. Mero struggling to count uh, to uh, cover. Still hurting that back. One, two. Kick out by Triple H. Mero so close to regaining the Intercontinental title. Mero now. No. Every time they come back to the board here, it gets worse and worse. Good lord. This is pay per view, pal. We're live. Irish up corner to corner by Mero. Triple H comes out. Mero catches him. Go for a Samoan drop. Oh, Samoan drop in the corner. Is he going for the wild thing? Is he going for that shooting star press? Shooting star press. Jushin Thunder Liger. By God. Triple H now is woozy. He's woozy. Oh, pushes. Oh, he pushes Hepner at the ropes. And Mero crotches himself. Mero down. Hold on his balls. Both men down. I'm surprised Hepner didn't do a fucking bump, the twat. Get check time. Trevor goes for the cover. One, two, kick up my mirror. Man, the raise that left shoulder. Wild man Mark Merrill and Hunter Hearst Helmsley giving it their all, just as we have seen every other WWF superstar do here tonight in your house. Triple H going for the pedigree, Triple H going for the pedigree. Double leg takedown there by Merrill, grabs the legs and slingshots Triple H into the ring post, good lord. Into the ring post. Can the wild man cover him in time? Wild man Mark Merrill throws the shoulder wall. Shoulder barely coming up. And again, give Helmsley 
credit for having presence of mind to raise the left shoulder. But now, the wild man knows what he has to do. He tried to do it earlier on. Here we go. Mirrors up to the top rope. Mirrors up to the top rope. Spring shot. High cross body. Good lord. One, two. Kick out by Triple H. Kick out by Triple H. Oh no. Hepner's down. Mero just goes on. Mero, Triple H's ducked and Hepner got took down. Triple H with a. Oh, neck breaker. Triple H now goes to the outside, grabs the Intercontinental belt off the Fink. Triple H with the belt in the ring. Hepner's still down. Mero's starting to get to his feet. Triple H. Oh no, Mark Mero kicked him. Punch, punch, punch. Triple H is down. Mark Mero's up. And, oh, ducks to the right hand. Triple H catches him. Over the back goes Mero. Through the legs goes for the jackknife pin. But Hepner's down. Hepner's down. Mero's won the match, basically. But Hepner's woozy. One, two. Kick out by Helmsley. Kick out by Helmsley. Hepner's still down. He managed to count that four, but he's still down. Mero's up, got Helmsley in the corner. Corner, corner, Irish up. Oh, Shot Race goes over the top, all the way down. Mero now off the ropes, over the top. Oh, he hit that uh, over the top high cross, but that uh, somersault. But in the face. Someone's coming down the ringside. Goldust, Goldust is here. Grabs the Continental title. Goldust. Oh, he went to hit Triple H, but Mero, Triple H ducked and he hit Mero instead. But then he turns around and hits Triple H with it. Goldust was intended to hit Triple H anyway. And Goldust just leaves. Goldust now walking back. I think I heard JR say that Triple H um, made a proposition to Marlena in the backstage area before the match or something. I think that's what I heard. Well, Hepner's up and he's. Counting both men out on the outside. I don't know what he's up to. I can't quite tell. Seven, I think. Eight. Nine. Mero's back in the ring. Mero's back in the ring. Mero wins. Mero wins by count out. But obviously, he won't win the Intercontinental title. Mero's back in, he's uh, oh, just shoved uh, Hepner. He's positioned on Triple H for something. Is he going to try and hit that shooting star press? That's what he's signalling for. Signalling for the wild thing. Mero's won the match by count now, but he wants a bit of retribution, I think. Mark Mero's on the top rope and. Shooting star press! is going to make that official. 
Howard Finkel about ready to announce a championship to the capacity crowd in a title match is by a pinfall or a submission. That did not happen. Oh, wait a minute. Or still, it's your confidential champion, Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Goldust attacking Helmsley again. He knocked him down. He stopped him. Goldust has gone ballistic on Hunter Hurst Helmsley. What did Helmsley say to Marlena? Goldust, I think, is jealous. I don't know, but Helmsley has been beaten from pillar to post, and he has raised the ire of Goldust. There's no doubt about that. Nonetheless, Hunter Hurst Helmsley, like him or not, is still the Intercontinental Champion. As we take you now to Doc Hendricks, I believe, with the World Wrestling Federation Champion. There you see. Yeah, look at the outside, ladies and gentlemen. And Doc is ready to interview the man himself. Go ahead, Doc. Sid. You have found out in the short month you've been World Wrestling Federation Champion, you are no longer the hunter, you are the hunted. Now, I'd like to take you back to earlier this morning on Sunday Morning Superstars when that has never been more evident. Now, there it was, Shawn Michaels diving on you as I was conducting an interview with you. Out comes Bret Hart, and at one time, you and Bret Hart are both beating on Shawn Michaels. And then Bret Hart really made the big bad mistake of turning his back on psycho sid and boy you sure took advantage of that opportunity as we can see right here here it comes bow just like that doxy if you had to learn by now see don't put your nose in my business and if you can't believe that ask jose all right, Sid, but Jose, aside, tonight, you can squelch the critics. You can silence everybody by defeating the legend, Bret the Hitman Hart. Let me do something real simple. Even if you with a bad hair do, the future is going to send it. We'll play connect the dots. Figure this out, Bret. Sean beat you. Yeah, Sean beat you. And I beat Sean like a dog. Flow easy. All right. All right, Vince, back to you at ringside. Hold on to your hat. No doubt about that. And hold on to your hat, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Armageddon Rules matchup coming at you. We might have an opportunity to show you some of the things that led up to this extraordinary matchup involving the Undertaker. Unknown. unknown. Mankind. And execution. Let's take you back to the Survivor Series and take a look at the way all this began. has lit a fire in his soul. Now and forever, the man from the dark side will walk alone. The audio on this show is absolutely terrible. So we're just getting a recap video of uh, the Buried Alive match where the executioner made his debut. Attacking the take with a shovel. And dragging mankind out of the, uh, the hole. Obviously the executioner is infamously uh, the late great Terry Gordy. He's not here that long, I don't think. He has. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven matches here in the WWF. His first one is against Freddie Drew Floyd on the Raw After Buried Alive. His last is the 5th of January 1997, teaming with Mankind, losing against Owen Hart and the British Bulldog in a house show. He only has two... Uh, he's only on TV four times. And then he's back in uh, IWA Japan. And then there's a few independents, and then yeah, unfortunately, he's had a stroke and stuff. So the Armageddon rules. Ah, Vince is uh, going to tell us, but I'll tell you. No disqualification, no count out after pinfall or submission. The defeated wrestler has a ten count to resume the match. When one man cannot continue, the match is over. So very similar to a Texas Death Match. Um, yeah, so the excuse would be Terry, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. 
isn't the Terry Bam Bam Gordy of like 1983. Uh, it's not even the Terry Bam Bam Gordy of like 1995, really. So Terry's uh, sorry, executioner is in the ring. He came down to Papa Shango's music. He's managed by Paul Bearer. And the lights go out, and here comes the Undertaker. So this is a very different look Undertaker. This isn't uh, hat and gloves. This is the teardrop version. He changed uh, at Survivor Series. So coming down in his leather jacket that's done up, that's done buttoned up. What he'd sort of wear in like 1998 kind of stuff. This is Undertaker version Three, two, three. He's in his first version, and he's like his grey and purple. Yeah, this is like yeah, this is like version three Undertaker. Just getting a good pop, standing on the corner, raises the lights. <coughs> Excuse me, mankind, not here. Jimmy Corderas is our referee. Executioner wearing a uh, black uh, hood, black singlet, black boots with a little bit of red over the top. And we are underway, and I think a clobber and the executioner in the corner now. The best pure striker in a WF. Our ship corner corner by Taker. Oh, Goose Oh no, close line. Let's go for Goozle. Close line. Irish whip again by the Undertaker. Big oh, medium sized back body drop. Taker grabs him, rams him head first in the top turnbuckle. Again, Irish. Oh, no, reversed by the executioner. Who comes in, but Taker gets a big boot up. Undertaker, Irish, whips him. Big boot. Down goes the executioner. Oh! Kick. Uppercut kick. Rock on the executioner in the corner. Irish whip again. Hard goes the executioner. Undertaker comes in, boot. Irish up again. Oh no. Execution goes upside down in the corner. Taker comes in now, kicking away on uh, Execution. He's caught up in, upside down in the tree of. Whoa! Taker scares off uh, Jimmy Corderas. Paul Bearer sort of hanging around the aisle away. Undertaker now grabs the executioner, rams him with a knee of the gut. Uh, still clobbering. Taker grabs him, rams him into the turnbuckle. And the taker now goes to the opposing turnbuckle, the opposing corner, just a scare pool bearer. Oh, taker comes in for a charge, but executioner moves out of the way. Big round by Kushina. Irish whip now by the masked man, that reversal by the undertaker. Duck down, cardinal mistake there by a ring veteran, but uh, the forearm smash to the back doesn't face the undertaker. Irish whip again, this is the Irish whip. Fest catches the executioner and slams him down. Pure power there by Big Red. Off the ropes, goes for an elbow drop, but executioner gets out of the way. Executioner measuring Taker. Big clothesline sends Taker over the top rope to the outside and his feet. Grabs the feet of the Executioner does Taker. Drags him to the outside. Oh, man, come on, goes up there. Paul Bearer now from behind with the urn. Donk. But Undertaker, uh, that's not going to work for him, brother. Paul, Paul Bearer. Oh, no, Executioner from behind. Executioner's got the Undertaker and through, sort of just lays him onto the Spanish announce table. Undertaker does not look happy. <laughs> I think I've heard reports of the uh, Undertaker wasn't really happy about this match because obviously he wasn't getting the Terry Gordy of old. He was just getting a sort of a bit of a. Everyone noticed it was on Terry Gordy's dark side of the ring that after the the sort of the stroke and what happened on that flight home from Japan, he just wasn't. He was just a bit not there in the brain kind of thing. 
they'd have to be constantly reminded of things and all that kind of stuff. So I'm guessing the Undertaker would have loved to have had a match with like a prime Terry Gordy, but he's not getting that at this point. Undertaker now ripping up the uh, some of the blue mats at ringside, scoops up. Oh, here comes Mankind, Mankind, Mankind tripped over the mat. He tried to chop block the Undertaker, but he tripped over the mat. Mankind came running around and tripped over the mat and just missed the Undertaker. But it's now two on one clobbering now with Paul Bearer's men. Both men now roll Undertaker back in the ring. Rounds by Mankind. Double R ship now coming up. Double close line. Oh, down goes Undertaker. Undertaker sits right back up though. Bigger round of executioner, bigger round of mankind. Bigger round of executioner, bigger round of mankind. Bigger round of executioner, both men now. All three men, nope. All three men now go to the outside. Bigger round of mankind. Left out, left, right to the executioner. Undertaker grabs him. Double knocker knocker. They're all now working their way down the aisle way. Undertaker with Mankind. Oh, big headbutt by Taker. They're in the gra are they on the grassiness now of the uh, in your house? Oh, for his execution at the guardrail. Mankind with Undertaker now. Oh, big run by Taker. Mankind is good lord thrown through the house. He's thrown through the, the front window of the house. Holy moly! The, in, the uh, interview area, I think it is. Undertaker's now got Mankind. Where's he taking him? What's he going? Oh, and throws him through the front door. Good Lord. <laughs> Excuse me, that comes over and right hands Taker. And again. They're working their way back to the uh, open window of the house. Where the Titan Tron would be. But it's just a book of... A, a, Big sort of tarpaulin thing made to look like a window. Undertaker now measures a executioner. Oh, smashes him into the good lord. The house is going to come down. Holy moly. The house just moved about 12 feet. Undertaker and executioner are destroying the set in this Armageddon rules match. Rules. Haskell. They have been foolish to sign for this matchup, recognizing that it could turn into this. Maybe without Paul Bear, the Undertaker doesn't have a, the managerial leadership that he really needs. Red crowd getting behind the Undertaker as the executioner of mankind. Now rolled him into the ring. <laughs> Undertaker now fighting away. He's fighting both men again. Oh, right, there's my executioner. Oh, there's some uh, some security guards now are uh, trying to stop mankind. There's some agents. It's fucking agent, Frankie. Mace. They've just maced mankind. Security guards now trying to take them trying to take mankind down while the Undertaker and Executioner go back down the aisle away. Undertaker now throws Executioner through where the door should be. They're now working their way backstage. Good lord. In the bowels of the facility. They're now in the uh, lobby area. I think going up some steps. Excuse me, trying to get away. There's a police officer just stood there doing nothing about this. <laughs> and the tech is chasing the executioner up the steps and out the door. Looks like they're going outside. That's a crowd have fallen them as well. The camera's just stood there. The camera hasn't moved because it's probably not, not, not got enough cord, probably. A lot of the crowd are going outside as well, following what's going on. In the ring, security 
Uh, Tony Guerrero put a looks like a straight jacket on mankind. Yep, they're putting a straight jacket on mankind. Holy moly! Mankind now running around the ring with a straight jacket on. Goes to the outside. Looks quite the home in a straight jacket. Paul Bear follows him behind. And <laughs> Mankind trying to escape. Monsoon's out there now. <laughs> Monsoon's throwing Mankind down to the floor. <laughs> Paul Bear are not happy about this. What the hell? <laughs> Executioners are just going to roll and... <laughs> Rolling down a hill into some water on the outside of the arena. Holy mo <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think they had to take a launch him over the uh, guard rail and he went rolling down the sharp incline. Excuse me, <laughs> getting out of the moat of the West Palm Beach, Florida Coliseum. And the Undertaker's now coming back through the concession area. Going back through the backstage curtains. Undertaker now stepping through the door. And he sees Mankind wearing a straight jacket. Undertaker just booted Mankind down. Picks him up. Oh, big right hand, uh, big uppercut there by Taker. One soon gets out of the way. Mankind now standing on the throat of Mankind. The Undertaker is now standing on the throat of Mankind. Undertaker picks up Mankind. Oh, an uppercut knocks him back down again. Well, knocks him woozy anyway. Oh, here comes the Executioner. The Executioner's now in. Execution comes jogging into the ring. Undertaker grabs him. Oh, big right hand. Knee to the gut. Oh, Irish whip now by Taker. Close line. Down goes the Executioner. Covered in water. Taker signals for the end. He's got a hole in his uh, thigh trousers. Scoops up the executioner. Scoops him up. Take a drops him with a tombstone pile driver. One, two, three. Gets the pinfall. That's not the end though. He needs to now. Referee now needs to apply the ten count. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. Undertaker wins. Undertaker wins. Undertaker wins. The Undertaker. And his first ever Armageddon rules match. The executioner has been executed. Maybe not excellently executed, but effectively executed. Physically executed with a two-stone pile driver. May the executioner now rest in peace. The Undertaker looking back at Paul Bear. Stay away, Paul! One day, get away, one Paul. day, the Undertaker will get his hand on Paul Bear. I don't believe we've seen the last, however, of mankind. For that matter, certainly not Paul Bear. The Undertaker victorious. However, standing by right now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Doc Hendricks, I believe. And Doc, ready to talk to the former WWF champion, the hitman Bret Hart. Doc, can you hear him? Yeah, I sure can, Minnie Mac. It is crazy here in West Palm Beach, but Bret, now it's time. And I've got to tell you, I have always admired you like all your fans because of your collectiveness, your calmness. You're always cool in a very, very volatile situation, except this morning on Sunday Morning Superstars. I'd like to take you back right now as I was interviewing Psycho Sid. Shawn Michaels came out 
jump Sid from behind, and here you came to jump into the fracas as well. And there you can see it on the TV right now. Now, I would imagine the reason you were coming out there is because you didn't want Sean to have Sid in a position where he'd be unable to defend the title and ruin it for you tonight. Let me put it this way. I wouldn't put anything past Sean Michaels. He's been trying so hard to rain on my parade. This is a guy I've had it up to here. Now, Sean what about Michael. this right here, Brett? I hate to interrupt, but there you Come made on, a bad mistake that. turning your back Come on Michael. You can't turn your back on anybody. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing I'm going to worry about anymore is me. I've waited to get back the World Wrestling Federation Championship belt for eight months. And all I've thought about is one thing, Shawn Michael. Well, Shawn Michael, you don't matter anymore. Six foot eight, psycho Sid, he's the big man. He is the man. But as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really work. Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait. I think we got to go back to ringside. Shawn Michaels is coming to the ring. He's playing his music. It's my time. It's my interview. And everybody always comes in with Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. I am sick to death of Shawn Michaels. And as far as I'm concerned, after I win the World Wrestling Federation Championship belt, I look forward to it. Right, Brett, thank you, and Vince, a very upset Brett, the Hitman Hart. You guys at ringside better be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, former World Wrestling Federation champion in his own right, yeah. Forever eight months, this man electrified capacity crowd all over the world like no one has ever who won the World Wrestling Federation title. He is charismatic, he is flamboyant, and in does not want to be a role model, no doubt about that. But some people think his honesty is to be applauded. It's certainly very refreshing, and I'm sure he's going to be very candid out here at King. I suggest you mind your manner. So HBK is going to be the uh, guest commentator on this uh, matchup. And I'm shaking hands and. Uh, Kissing babies. Yowza, yowza, yowza. John, can you hear us all right? I can hear you a little bit there, big man. All right, it's loud out here. No doubt about it. It's going to get louder when the hit man Bret Hart comes no, up. It doesn't get any louder except when HBK is in town. That's a good you point. You expect the boy to bring down. Have a seat. Sit down. Settle down. The hitman Brad Hart ready to join us momentarily in the square circle. Is Sean wrestling at the minute or not? When did he last wrestle? When did he last lose his smile? Oh, yeah. Uh, nope. Brad Hart now coming out of the ring. So, does Sean wrestle? Where are we? So he lost the belt of Survivor Series. He continues to be going against Goldust. And the house shows he wrestled on the 7th. Uh, he's not on television much. He wrestles a dark match tomorrow night against Vader. He wrestles a Superstars TV taping. But I'd imagine that's probably a dark match. I don't know though. John Michaels and Undertaker uh, teaming up to defeat Mankind and Vader. Uh, dark match again on the 30th of December against Steve Austin, and then the Royal Rumble. So he's not he's not on TV much. And then obviously February he loses his smile, so that will. So these two uh, don't like each other on TV at the minute. Uh, I think behind the scenes they're friendly enough, but on on camera it's uh, they're not liked. And obviously Sean's having issues off off, off camera and there's all that kind of stuff. But Earl Hepner is going to be a referee. Brett wearing his uh, traditional pink and black singlet, white boots. He's awaiting the champion to come down the ringside. I, I've experienced that in my time. But you know something? Brett, of all people, should understand up-and-comers passing past guys who maybe are out of their prime. That remains to be seen. Here we go now, ladies and gentlemen. You want to talk about someone who, well, whose time it may be. Here he comes now. 
if Jerry the King Lawler is correct, then this man will be the dominant force in the World Wrestling Federation for perhaps years to come. Here comes the monster himself, Psycho Sin. So the newly crowned, well, as of last month, crowned WF champion, Psycho Sid from West Memphis, Arkansas, coming down the ring, fist pumping all the crowd, all the fans. Sid wearing black tights, black boots. Who's the man? Sid Justice, Sid Udi, Psycho Sid, Lord Humongous, whatever you want to call him, he is the man. Has he been wrestling? Has he been, who's he been wrestling on the loop? Uh, 1996. He's been. Uh, uh, Steve Austin. Steve Austin Farouk. He wrestled Triple H on the Raw after uh, Survivor Series. And he's going to be feuding with Mankind and Austin and The Undertaker up until, excuse me, Raw Rumble. Sid with a big old Sid Pyro as he comes in the ring. The big Sid going off. Sid already sweating. Shut up, Sean. You didn't even like him. Jam. Jam. So what is this? Let's have a look at some of the ratings for this show. If we go back far enough. Here we go. Should we get a 4.87 on cage match? So we get... Uh, wasn't expecting much from the show, but actually enjoyed the Flash Funk versus Leaf Cassidy was good. Owen and the Bulldog versus Diesel Razor was decent. Triple H versus McMahon was good. Dinner Taker versus Excuse was okay. And Sid versus Brett was fine. So overall, a good two-hour show. A two-in-your-house show. Nothing great or outstanding, but good for what it was. I was entertained. And a two-hour show with a great opener that fades off from there, but I still enjoyed myself. The tag match is underappreciated here. I thought it was strong with all the story beats of Stone Cold interrupting. Forgetting that Bulldog and Austin had a bit of a rivalry here before the SummerSlam incident with Owen. Uh, Miro and Triple H had a strong match with an ending, with an ending of the times. Undertaker had a match. <laughs> Sid and Brett also had a match for sure to show his strong commentary charisma to put more into their feud overall. I thought this was a good solid show, especially given the time given. Fine show, nothing terrible, nothing great, but it was just short, so it wasn't hard to watch. A few bad finishes, and then the main event was way too long. Nothing on the show. I'd go out to have my way to see. So it gets sort of a mixed, a mixed uh, bag, but... Triple H, oh, sorry, Triple H. Why don't I just call him Triple H? Sid uh, stomping away on Bret Hart. Sid, obviously, with the height and weight advantage. Brett with the experience. Irish up by Sid. Duckstown card, no mistake by a ring veteran. Kicked by uh, Brett. Rake of the eyes by Brett. Oh, big round by Brett. Brett now raking the eyes of Sid across the top rope. Brett now grabs Sid by the... Oh, trunks and punches him in the gut. And again. Snap. Yeah, by Brett. Takes Sid down. Brett drops an elbow across the face of Psycho Sid. Sid with a head, sorry, Brett with a head back to the gut. Words of uh, Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels always won for Candor, no doubt about that. Brett now with uh, Sid back up to his feet. Clubbing him, oh, blocked by right, Sid with the right hand of his own. Right hand again by Sid. Brett goes to the outside, Sid follows. Brett now running around. Oh, Sid catches him, Sid catches him. Pulls him back outside. Big ground of the gut by Sid. 
Sid with this. Oh, just to hold it, held the arm and then kicked him right in the gut. Shut up! <laughs> Sid Epica, a fan. <laughs> Big round by Sid. Hepner on the outside trying to get both men back in the ring. Brett rolled back in by Sydney. Sydney Aloysius Udi. Brett's back up to his feet though, catches Sid as he comes in. Break of the eyes by Brett Hart. Come on, Brett, off the man's eyes. Oh, big headbutt by Brett. Brett. Oh, Brett clobbering Sid in the ropes. Oh, and again. Oh, Sid ducks down and launches uh, Brett over the top rope to the outside. Sid now following him outside. Oh, Sid rams uh, Brett into the steel guardrail. Sid now moving the ropes. Uh, moving the ropes, twat. Moving the mats. Exposing the, uh, con the hard concrete floor. Sid going for something maybe out here. Looks like Sid's going to go for a powerbomb on that side on the concrete floor. Good lord. But Brett no. Oh, Ram Sid back first into the steel post. And Brett. Oh, does it again. Brett now picks up Brett. Uh, Brett now picks up Sid and then slams him back first again into the ring post. And dunks him to the outside. A little shout when Brett to get him back in the ring. Brett now grabs Sid, rolls him back in the ring. Brett follows, Brett goes to the second rope on the inside. Double axe to the back of Sid. Oh, Brett now clobbering on that back. Making the weak in that back ready for the sharpshooter, maybe. Oh! And again. Brett dropping knees across the back of Sid. Sid down and in trouble. And with the sharpshooter applied, with the damage done to the lower back, it would even be more effective. Oh, yeah, Brett setting him up. Brett picks up Sid, picks him up. Oh, drops him with a backbreaker. That is a big man to get up. And Brett did that with uh, with ease. Brett now rolls Sid over to his gut and then drops an elbow to the back. Oh, run, run. Oh, again. Brett now with a knee in the back, pulling away on the chin of Sid Vicious. Sid. Joe, I have a psycho Sid, where is his name? As you know what his name is. Brett with that knee and the small of the back, pulling away on the chin. Oh, and a help it, headbutt to the back, good lord. Brett grabs him up, pulls Sid up, puts him in the corner, whips him corner to corner. Oh, hard. Goes Sid, Brett now comes in. Slowly, oh, well, we're at the top of the head. Snap mare again by Brett, good lord. Brett, oh, drops a leg. Turns and rolls Sid over to his gut again. Oh, drops a knee in the back. And again, knee in the back. Hands clasped around the chin, pulling on the... Uh, bending the champion in half. Brett Hart taking Psycho Sid apart. Point of the elbow again, right into the, in the kidney. It's like a bullseye has been drawn on the kidneys in the lower back. Brett picks a short uh, diesel up, puts him back in the corner. Sid now slumps down in the corner. Brett stumping a mud hole in him. Uh, choking away on the champion. Sid 
Sid standing, uh, Brett standing on the throat of Sid. Brett goes to the other corner while the referee's distracted and uh, taking the turnbuckle cover off. Good lord. What is Brett doing? What is Brett doing here? Brett comes back over. Starts kicking away on Sid again, who's still down on the mat. Brett picks up Sid. Ramsey. No, Sid blocks, Sid blocks, Sid blocks. Sid blocks. Brett with a punch to the punch to the back of the head, but to the back. Brett drops it with a back suplex. Brett goes for the cover. One, two, kick it by Sid. Got to hook the leg, man. Brett picks up Sid. Go for the side rush and leg sweep. Go for the cover. One, two, kick out by Sid. That's still turnbuckle. He's still exposed and has not been used yet. But go for now. Five moves of doom, maybe. Oh no, go for a suplex. Brett going for a suplex. Brett. Oh, takes him over. Beautifully done by Hitman. Brett back up to his feet. Sid on his laying on the canvas on his on his belly welly. Brett's going up second rope inside. Drops the elbow across the back. Five moves of doom. Brett now rolls him back across one, two, kick out by Sid. Brett now going to the outs to the apron. Is he going to the top rope? What the hell is going on here? Sid's back up to his feet, Sid's back up to his feet. Oh, punched his uh, Brett on the chest and then launches him off the top rope. And look, Psycho Sid back up to his feet. Brett's down now on all fours. Sid grabs Brett by the hair. Big round. Good lord. And again. Sid clobbering on Brett. Irish rip now. Big boot by Sid. Did Sid just give the wolf pack sign to Sean? Yeah, he did. Sid just gave the uh, wolf pack sign to Sean, I think. Suddenly. Sid picks up Brett. Irish rips him again. Beautiful power slam. One, two, kick it by Brett. Hook the leg. Sid hook the leg. Beautiful power slam there, there by Sid. The power of Sid it only takes a few moves for him to get back in the swing of things. Winner of this match, Jim, Jim Ross has just said that the winner of this match will face Shawn Michaels at uh, the Royal Rumble. Sid kicking away in the uh, in the chest of Brett while holding his arm, and then short arm close on by Sid. Goes for the cover. One, two, kick out by Brett. Sid up off the ropes. Oh, went for a leg drop, but Brett got out of the way. Brett's got the legs. Brett's got the legs. Brett's going to go for the chop shoot. Brett's going to go for the chop shoot, but Sid kicks off. Sid, Sid kicks off, and Brett goes hard to the outside. That's still turnbuckle. Still, it's George Neapolitan. Is it Bill Apter? Whatever, don't they? Anybody as powerful as Psycho Sid in your life? No. I mean, at one time I thought Vader, but no, I felt the the wrath. Hey, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Steve, Steve Austin just came outside. Steve Austin just came running out the ringside and just chop blocked uh, Brett's leg away from him. Good lord! Here comes Bulldog and Owen. Bulldog and Owen now attacking. Well, Bulldog is attacking Austin. Owen just down there trying to stop him. Need to blow my nose. Brett, the hitman heart, to lose a match in this manner, it could be 
his last time ever of becoming W. Wait a minute. Well, Brett's not going to quit. I'll promise you he's, that. No. He's back in. The there is no quit in Bret Hart. He's back. And I'll tell you something. For those that may not be aware, Stone Cold is no ally of Psycho Sid. Brett's back in the ring. I don't think Sid knows what happened. Sid's looking confused, which doesn't take a lot. Bless him. Oh dear, sorry ladies and gentlemen, colds are coming out of me really badly. Hopefully you're enjoying the show though, we are a main event here. World Champion Sid Goodwin, number one contender, Bret Hart. Earl's checking in with Bret if he wants to carry on. Oh, big kick by Sid in the corner. Clubbering four out in the back, clubbering. Club it's clubbering time baby, it's clubbering time if you will. Sid now kicking away on the prune, Bret Hart on the uh, canvas. That Texas Rattlesnake came running down, attacking Bret Hart just with a single chop block. Changes the whole complexion of this match. I tell you something, you don't have to graduate wrestling skills a valedictorian to learn those skills. That's just stomping somebody right in the face. By God. Sid picks up Bret by the hair. Sid scoops up Brett, puts him on his shoulder. Brett evades, Brett evades, get back. Oh, no. Oh, Brett was going to try and push Sid into that top turnbuckle, but uh, Sid dropped down and Brett fell down on the canvas. Brett pulls himself up. Sid tries to, no, Sid tries again. Scoops up Brett on his shoulder. Trying to go for the snake guys, maybe on that top turnbuckle. Oh, Brett goes behind, and... Oh, no, he tried to ram Sid in again, but Sid ducked down, and Brett hit the top, the uh, exposed tumbuckle this time. Brett's been knocked woozy. Brett may have a request for a dentist after going face first to that exposed uh, turnbuckle. Well, he's the one that pulled it. Exposed the turnbuckle, isn't exactly, it? and it turned against him, King. You're right. And Come now on, we Sid. can confirm the yes. Viewers Sid's back up to his feet. Brett's now up. Woozy. Sid grabs him. Sid goozles him. Sid's got him by the goozle. And choke slam. Go hooks the leg. One, two. Kick out by Brett, kick out by Brett, kick out by Brett, holy moly. Huge choke slam there. Sid can't believe it, crowd can't believe it. Sid's now wagging his finger in Hepner's face. Brett's calling to the ropes to try and get up the ropes. Sid's now one side of the ring. Brett's up, Brett's up. Here comes Sid, ducked down, but oh, no, Sid stopped himself from going over, but big close, double close line, both men down, down to the outside, hard, good lord. Right down by the uh, commentary tables, Brett's up to his feet just, oh no, Brett's up. Brett's trying to grab the chair of Shawn Michaels. Brett now with the chair, oh, Sid attacks from behind. Sid looking over at Sean Muggles. Saying he's not gonna bother with him, he's gonna he wants Brett Hart. Oh Sid just pie faced Sean Muggles in at the guardrail, holy moly. Brett now working over Sid on the in the ring, Irish by Sid no Sid and oh, Brett goes into Sean, Brett goes into Sean. Brett turns around. Sid grabs him. Bum. One, two, three. Sid wins, Sid wins, Sid wins. And more trouble brews between Sean Muggles and Bret Hart. Sean got on the apron to uh, try and have a go at Sid, but Sid whipped Bret into Sean. Sean went flying down the outside. Bret turned, got sort of doubled over and turned around into a power bomb. And Sid retains the World Heavyweight title and will face Sean Muggles 
at next month's Royal Rumble. Someone wearing an NWO shirt. Is it an NWO shirt at the front row? Brett's now on the outside. Gets a, gets a bit close to Shawn Michaels, but they both walk away. No, Brett turns around. Big Ryan knocks down Brett. It knocks down Shawn even. <laughs> Brett now pulls Shawn's t-shirt over his head. Now clobbering him. Hockey fights, if you will. Brett beating the absolute shit out of Shawn Michaels on the outside. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. We have just watched In Your House 12 from December the 15th, 1996. That is it for 1996. Next time you join us next week, it'll be 1997 in February. And the landscape would have changed a couple of times. <laughs> it's going to be a rocky period now for a few months in 1997. But hopefully you've enjoyed the show. Hopefully I've sounded okay. Um, I do apologise, but... It's only a cold. I can still continue to sit here and watch wrestling, so endeavour to bring you the best quality stuff we can. And the audio from there, the, the video has been a bit dodgy, so I'll try and boost everything in post. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for continuing to support. Please do not forget to subscribe to us on our home, the Place to Be Wrestling Network, uh, available on all good podcast supplies, as is our sister network, the North South Connection, as is the Backbone Wrestling Network, as is our own little network we've got, the Old Bakery Productions Network. You can find us on youtube.com forward slash at MemphisCast, com forward slash MemphisCast. Uh, listen, like, share, follow, whatever, friends of the show, our vantage point, Acid Wash Memories, Greetings from Allentown, Town, Book of the Territory, Stick to Wrestling with John McAdam, The Outdated Wrestling Hour with Bob Smith and anything from the WrestleCopia Network, uh, independentwrestling.tv forward slash Deathmatch Outlaws, where you can see my, you can see my uh, refereeing return after a four and a half year hiatus i shall just double check that that is the link 10 pounds a month gets you some of the best uh, independent action out there uh is it that one yeah independentwrestling.tv forward slash deathmatch outlaws you can see my 
like I said, my in-ring uh, return. £10 a month and you get the likes of uh, some new stuff like uh, H2O, Ruthless Pro, Limitless. You also get to watch some of the back catalogues from some of the finest independent promotions out there, such as uh, Shakara, IWA Mid-South, Beyond Wrestling, Freelance Wrestling, Limitless Wrestling, Ruthless Pro, CZW, IWC, No Hold Bad. Uh, there's so much to choose from out there. Uh, and it's only £10 a month, so d- please do give that a uh, a watch. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, as, as always, for your continued support. Thank you very much to the fine folk of West Palm Beach, Florida. Thank you very much to Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross, and Vince McMahon. And we will leave you with a song that was in the charts on this day in 1996. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next week for In Your House Weekly. Uh, where shall I stick this? Eh? I said, where shall I stick this? Don't ask silly questions, eh? Hey. Hey. Up on a mountain, way out of town, a Saturday night, and the folks gather round. Bring a little bottle, but you hold on tight. It's a hillbilly rock and roll night. Are you all say Ma and Pa? Everybody's out in the yard. Somebody's calling out, go, can go. It's Uncle Earl on his old banjo. To the hillbilly rock, hillbilly road. Stand in line and the way we go. Little bit of moonshine, a little bit of me. To the hillbilly rock and roll with me. Yeah. Grandpa's rocking in his rock. Everybody dance.